ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه اما بعد فان خير الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدى هدى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار from what people of al hadith need to understand and what every muslim needs to understand is that the way of the companions their understanding of al-islam their aqida the way they fasted the ibadat that they did the way they behaved amongst themselves it is the blueprint for al-islam the blueprint of al-islam is not what my people do back in africa it's not what your people do it's not your madhab it's not his madhab it's not what the kuffar say it's not what's okay in the media. It's what the companions did, radiallahu anhum. So al-Islam that Allah Azza wa is going to accept from the slaves of Muqiyama is going to be the Islam that resembles what the companions were upon, radiallahu anhum ajma'in. And that's just not a claim or some kalam from me as the khatib that's established in the Quran and the Sunnah. Allah Ta'ala mentioned in the Quran وَالسَّابِقُونَ الْأَوَّلُونَ مِنَ الْمُهَاجِرِينَ وَالْأَنصَارِ وَالَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُوهُمْ بِإِحْسَانٍ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ وَرَضُوا عَنْهُمْ The beginning, the vanguard, the first people of Islam from the muhajirin and the ansar and those people who followed them in ihsan, they followed them correctly. Allah will be pleased with them and they'll be pleased with Allah. So the one who doesn't follow the companions and the way he worships Allah, he's in trouble, Yomul Qiyama. If he's an individual who believes cursing Abu Bakr and Umar is okay, he has to prove that in Al-Islam. Where did Ali ibn Abi Talib and the rest of the companions curse Abu Bakr and Umar? If the individual believes it's permissible to say, Ya Rasulullah, Ya Muhammad, and to make dua to the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he has to bring some proof to show us where did Abu Bakr and Uthman and Ali and the rest of them do that. If you can't prove that, then no for surety is from the many ways that a shaitan has created for the people. So I want to talk about something here today in this last khutbah of this year's Ramadan. It's more important than Ramadan itself. And I say, Wallahi wa billahi wa tallahi, the one who doesn't do this, he has no fast in Ramadan, and that is the importance of the salat. We have some people, as the Nabi says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, رُبَّ الصَّائِمْ لَيْسَ لَهُ مِنْ صِيَامِهِ إِلَّا الْجُوعْ وَالْعَطِشْ There are some people who when they fast, they only fast and they make themselves hungry and thirsty. A person fasts all day, and then when the Olympics were on, he goes to watch men running around with shorts, he goes to watch women swimming in the pool with no clothes on. He watches women playing volleyball. This is not the fast of Al-Islam. The man came into the masjid of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he prayed two rakat. And he prayed very quickly. And then after praying those two rakat, he came and he said, Assalamu Alaikum Ya Rasulullah. The Prophet said to him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Wa Alaikum Salam Wa Rahmatullah. Irja for salli, for inna kalam to salli. Go back and pray, because you didn't pray. The man went back the second time, he prayed very quickly. He came and said, Salaamu Alaikum Ya Rasulullah. He said, Wa Alaikum Salam Wa Rahmatullah. Go back and pray, you didn't pray. He went back a third time, he prayed very quickly. He came, Assalamu Alaikum Ya Rasulullah. He said, Wa Alaikum Salam Wa Rahmatullah. Go back and pray, because you didn't pray. The man said, Ya Rasulullah, teach me, I don't know. And then the Nabi explained to him, if you want to make salat, make a good wudu. 
After making wudu, stand up and face the qibla. Say Allahu Akbar. Read what's easy for you from the Quran. Say Allahu Akbar. Go into Rukur and take your time. And then come up and say, Sami Allah liman hamida. And he went through the whole prayer. The point is, the man prayed. But according to the standard of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he didn't pray. How many people, this is their condition. He fast, but according to the standard of Al-Islam and the Sunnah, he didn't fast. So what we want to take a look at today, Ikhwani, is not just the importance of the Salat, but the way the companions used to look at the prayer. The way that the Salaf of this Ummah, there's a masjid, Ahlul Hadith, when Al Imam Ahmed was asked, who were Ahlul Hadith? Who were Ahlul Hadith? Al Imam Ahmed said, Ahlul Hadith, هم الذين يعملون بالحديث They're the ones who work by the Hadith. If the Hadith goes against their culture, they're Ahlul Hadith. The people of Al-Hadith on the day of Al-Jum'ah, they know the etiquettes of coming to the masjid for Jum'ah. There are a lot of rewards that have been established for the one who knows what he's doing for the Salat of Al-Jum'ah. If he puts on nice clothes, if he takes a shower, if he puts perfume on, and he comes to the masjid, and he fills in the spaces for every right step, a hasana, for every left step, a sayi'ah. What about the one who sits on the back of the wall? He puts himself out of the reward. I don't say you're haram, you're going to the hellfire. What I'm saying, Ahlul Hadith, they have to know these simple things. They're easy things. I'm not putting anybody down. But it is not enough for a person to say Ahlul Hadith and his culture is against what Ahlul Hadith are upon. How were the companions in regard to Salat? Before even dealing with that, Ikhwani, know this for a fact. The Nabi told the people, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Inna awwala ma yuhasabu bihi al-abdu min a'malihi yawm al-qiyamah as-salat. The very first thing Allah is going to ask you about, you, you, and you, very first thing, yawm al-qiyamah, when the person is standing there, Allah is going to ask him about his prayer. He's not going to ask about birru walidain. He's not going to ask about riba. He's not going to ask about siyam and hajj umrah. He's going to ask you about what did you do about those prayers. We have a lot of youngsters in this masjid right now. And this is not only for the youngsters, but the Nabi told us about our religion, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, Ju'ilat li al-ard masjidan wa tahura fa ayyuma rajulun adrakatu salat fal yusalli. The whole world, the whole earth has been made for me and my ummah a masjid and a purifier. So whenever the time for salat comes, Anybody, everyone has to pray. The Muslim doesn't have an excuse. I don't have any water. The earth has been made a purifier. Make tayammum. The person says, but I'm not in the masjid. I'm not in the place of prayer. I'm in the university. Al-Islam says, you have to go and find a place to pray. Islam gave us a window of opportunity. If you can't pray right on time, you have to pray somewhere in between that time. The Muslim doesn't have a right. Even the Muslim doctor, his job is to do brain surgery, to do a heart transplant. It's going to take him eight hours to do the operation. El Islam says to that doctor, you are allowed to combine Zuhr and Asr. You are allowed to combine Maghrib and Isha. The Salat is never taken off of the man. The man can't pray standing up. He has to pray sitting down. The person is paralyzed on his back. He has to pray on his back. Salat won't be taken off of you. Look at the Salat with the companions. There is one of the Tabi'een. They're the people who learn from the companions. His name is Abdullah ibn Shaqiq al-Uqayli. He learned from over 30 of the companions. He said, Kana ashabu nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam la yaruna shay'in min al-a'mal tarkuhu kufra ghayr al-salat. He said, those companions of the nabi they didn't look at anything that a person abandoned from the deeds as kufr, other than the prayer. During the time of the companions, if they knew you were a person who didn't give zakat, they made excuses for you. They said, maybe zakat is not wajib. If they knew you were a person, you weren't eating, or you were eating and not fasting, they said, maybe he's sick, maybe he's a traveler. If you were a person who didn't make hajj, they would make excuses. The lady doesn't wear hijab. The companions used to say, maybe she's a new Muslim. Maybe she's from the desert. Maybe she's a slave. But if the companion knew, this person is not praying. The companion said, he's a kafir. 
There were no ifs and buts about it. That person is a kafir. And that's because of all of the ahadith of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Al-ahdu alladhi baynana wa baynahum as-salat. Man tarakaha faqad kafara. The difference between us and those people, Sikhs, Hindus, Jews, Christians, atheists, agnostics, the difference between us and them is salat. Anyone who abandons it, he's a disbeliever. So I ask you people sitting here today, how many people do you know from your relatives? They don't pray. How many people do you know from your neighbors? They don't pray. How many people do you know from your wife's family? They don't pray. If the companions knew those individuals, they said, he's a munafiq, he's a kafir. How did the companions look at the salat? One of the tabi'een, and again, the tabi'oon, they were the people who were taught by the companions. His name is Ibrahim al one of the tremendous tabi'een, taught by Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud taught Ibrahim al -Nakhi. Ibrahim al -Nakhi taught al Imam Hamad ibn Abi Sulaiman, who taught Abu Hanifa. But people, if you were to ask them, what's the aqidah of Imam Ibrahim al nakhi who taught the Sheikh of Abu Hanifa? They don't know. How was Al Imam Ibrahim al nakhi He said, May Allah Ta'ala have mercy upon him. Kanu ida atu rajul yaakhudu anhu al ilm nadaru ira salatihi wa hadihi wa samtihi. He said in the past, Ibrahim al nakhi from the Tabi'in, if they went to take knowledge from a man, before they took knowledge from the man, they would look at his prayer. Before taking knowledge from the man, they would look at his hadi, his guidance. Does he drink with his right hand? Does he eat with his right hand? Or does he do with his left hand? They would look at the way the man was, how the man existed amongst the people. He said, and they would look at also his sumpt, just his general behavior. So they came all the way from Kufa, from Khurasan, from Egypt, wherever they, they came to the masjid to take knowledge from the scholar of that place. They wouldn't just go to that man and say, hey, I came from Yemen. I want to take knowledge from you. They would remain quiet and they would wait to look at how that man prayed. Did he pray towards a sutra? Did he do rough early a day? Did he take his time in the salat? Or when he prayed, was he looking around like that? Was he one of those individuals that his prayer was in one valley and the salat of the Nabi was in another valley altogether? <coughs> the Nabi told us, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and many of us get it twisted in this recession. The CEOs of the banks, they're stealing, they're stealing, they're stealing, and they're being rewarded for stealing even more, embezzling money. And yet, the Nabi told us they're not the biggest thieves. He says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, أسرق الرجو الذي يسرق صلاته لا يتم ركوعه ولا سجودة. The biggest thief is the one who steals from his prayer. He doesn't make ruku correctly. He doesn't make sajda correctly. When he prays, he's just up and down. The Nabi said, "Don't pray like a chicken. Don't pray like a chicken." So they will look at that man before they did anything to see how does this man pray. They find that the man is praying quickly. He doesn't do rough early a day. If he didn't do rough early a day, they would go and say, why? If he said, my imam said, my imam said, they would say, but what about the Nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? If the man didn't give a competent answer, they would say, ma salama. Now look at us. Someone comes to you to marry your daughter and you find out, does he drink khamar? If they say, yes, he drinks khamar, you're going to say, you can't marry my daughter, and rightly so. But do we ask the question, does he pray? Does he pray? Wallahi, the one who doesn't pray is doing a bigger crime and sin than the one who's drinking khamar. But with us, with us, the khamar is bigger than abandoning salat. Abandoning salat is kufrud. Drinking khamar is a kabira from a kabair. But it's not kufr. Everybody here. Everybody here, if we knew the man is drinking hummus, smoking crack, smoking weed, he wants to marry my daughter, we're going to say, well, Lord, he never, and rightly so. And I'm telling you, abandoning Salat is bigger than that. But we don't ask that question. And if we found out he didn't pray, it's okay, because he has a good job. The Salaf weren't like that. 
You want to know the position of the Salaf with Salat? The Nabi came to the people, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was telling the companions about the Dajjal. He said that when the Dajjal comes, he's going to be on this earth for 40 days, 4-0. The first day will be like a year. The second day will be like a month. The third day will be like a week. And the subsequent days will be like these days. When the Nabi used to speak about the Dajjal, the companions used to get nervous. They used to look at it being serious. They used to memorize those ayat from Surah Al-Kaf, the first ten and the last ten. They used to read Surah Al-Kaf in Ramadan and outside of Ramadan. The Nabi was telling them about the Dajjal. He looked to his right. Everyone looked to the right. The Nabi looked. He saw them looking. He said, what's the matter? They said, Ya Rasulullah, you were telling us about the Dajjal. We thought he was going to come out and we were afraid. He said, don't be afraid. If the Dajjal comes out while I'm here, I'm going to protect you against him. Not you make dua to me, but I'm going to give you advice how to deal with him. He said, but if the job comes out and I'm not here, everybody's responsible for himself. We're responsible for ourselves if the job comes out right now. And we don't even know where Allah is, where Allah isn't, what Allah does, what he doesn't do. The Nabi is from the note of Allah. The Nabi never died. You can make dua to the Nabi when the Dajjal comes and he makes all these games and tricks. A lot of people are going to follow him. But the point is, when he comes, 40 days. That's all, 40. First day like a year. Second day like a month. Third day like a week. And the subsequent days like our days. If the Muslims heard this, Today, we would say something. But when the companions heard it, what was the thing that came to their mind when they heard that? They said, Ya Rasulullah, kayfa nusalli. When the Dajjal comes, if the days are like that, how do we pray? If one day is like a year, how do we determine the prayer? That was the most important thing to them. Because the Salah is a part of the identity of the Muslim. If he brings this kid to this country, from Africa, from Syria, from Yemen, from Mirpur, he brings his kid to this country, he has to make jihad to make his kid hold on to Salah. Why would the Nabi allow the parents to hit the kid at the age of 10 if he didn't pray? And hitting them doesn't mean to oppress him, doesn't mean to kill him, doesn't mean to make him hate Salah. But he was sent as Allah said, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ We sent you as a rahma. And yet he said, if your child doesn't pray at the age of 10, you're allowed to hit him. To hold on to and to maintain and protect his identity. The companions, Ya Rasulullah, how do we pray? How do we pray? He told the people, Qaddiruha taqdira. Try to figure it out. Now if the people heard it for the first time, a Dajjal when he comes, 40 days, first day like a year, second day like a month, third day like a week, the rest of the days like the days, the Muslim today is going to say, how, how, why, man, how, but the what, how, why, what's the wisdom, how? Allah establishes in the Quran, Ar-Rahmanu ala al istawa Allah is over his throne in a way that befits his majesty. Only he knows. The Muslim says, how is he over? Why? When? <laughs> the companions were not like that. And that's why Ahlul Hadith, they hold on with their molas to the way that the companions were upon. Because their way was safe. You want to know how the Salat was with the Salaf of this Ummah? One of the ulama of the Salaf, his name was Ta'uz al-Yamani. He's from the Tabi'een. His son would make Salat like that little kid right there. If the kid made Salat, the father would say, Did you seek refuge in Allah from the Dajjal? If the boy said no, Al-Imam Ta'uz would say, Do your prayer again. And that's because the Nabi told the people, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, إِذَا تَشَهَّدَ أَهَدُكُمْ فَلْيَسْتِعِذْ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ أَرْبَعْ If one of you prays and you do the tashahad, أَتَّهِيَاتُ لِلَّهِ وَصَلَوَاتِ He says, seek refuge in Allah from four things after your prayer. And one of them is to seek refuge in Allah from the Masih al-Dajjal. In all of your prayers, wajib prayer, Juma prayer, Eid prayer, Sunnah prayer, every prayer. It's one of the protections of the job. And the person doesn't pray. Now if you don't seek refuge in Allah from these four things, your salat is still okay. If you don't do roughly a day, your salat is still okay. It's still okay. It's still okay. I don't say it's batila. But the point is, what about the one who doesn't pray at all? He doesn't pray at all. He's fasting in the month of Ramadan and he's not praying. In this masjid right now, wallahu alam, there's someone who didn't pray Fajr today. 
Although the Nabi told us sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam afdal as-salat salat as-subh yawm al-jum'ah fil jama'ah the best prayer that you can make in seven days the best prayer is the fajr prayer on friday in the jama'ah it's more virtuous than this juma prayer juma is wajib fajr in the masjid for those who make it is wajib and the fajr in the masjid the fajr in the masjid is more rewarding than this now the masjid alhamdulillah is full it's full where were the people for salatul fajr <coughs> That prayer is more important than this prayer. Alul <coughs> Hadith, they knew that. It's just not Ikhwani, I'm going to put on my shirt. Alul Hadith, I'm going to get a drum. Alul Hadith, Alul Hadith. I'm going to go around in my car. Alul Hadith. A person can do that as, and scream as much as he wants. But Al Imam Ahmed, who's Ahlul Hadith, they're the ones who work by the Hadith. They are the ones who know the Sunnah. They are the ones who know about these issues. Coming close and filling in the space and getting in the masjid on time for Juma and reading Surah Al Kaf and memorizing all of those issues. You want to know the importance of the Salat with the Salaf? One of the greatest scholars from the Tabi'een, Al Imam Al Zuhri, Muhammad ibn Shihab Al Zuhri, from the tremendous Tabi'een. He said that one day in Sahih al Bukhari, Anas ibn Malik, the young man, the Nabi came to Al-Medina, Anas ibn Malik was 10 years old. His mother, Umm Sulaim, a companion, took the boy to the Nabi. He was 10 years old. The lady said, Ya Rasulullah, my son Anas is aqil. He has intellect. I want him to be your khadim. He said, I took care of the Nabi for 10 years. Never did the Nabi say to me, why did you do that? Never did he say to me, why didn't you do that? The mother saw the importance of sending the boy to the masjid, putting the boy where he can learn the religion, and he became of the ulam of Islam, of the religion, from the companions. He went to a sham, a sham that has the fitna that it has right now. Wallahi, one of the reasons why that problem is in Syria right now, one of the reasons, the aqidah of the people there is jammed up. One of the problems of the fitna in Al-Iraq, the aqidah and the ibadat of the people there jammed up. One of the problems with the fitna in Pakistan, Afghanistan, the Aqidah, the Ibadat of the Muslims, the Ummah, jammed up. And as a result of that, Allah puts us to these trials and tribulations. Al Imam al Zuhri said, I went into the place. Anas ibn Malik was crying. I said, Anas ibn Malik, why are you crying? He said, Wallahi. I don't recognize with the people anything that we used to do during the time of the Nabi, except the Salat. I recognize the Salat, but this Salat, it has been lost. What did he mean by that? What did he mean by that? What he meant was, during the time of the Nabi, the white Muslim, the Muslim who was an Arab, he was the brother to Bilal ibn Rabah, and there was nothing between them. There was no racism, there was nothing. When the Nabi came during their time, he would say, hey people, give fi sabili la for the masjid. Everybody would give what they had. Not like now. And he said, I, didn't, I don't see that now. You have to beg the people in Ramadan. You have to get on your knees and beg the people. Take care of your own masjid. Take care of your own situation. If everybody from this ummah, if everybody from this ummah, everybody from this ummah, if they just got rid of cable TV, that money will help the masjid. He said, I don't, I don't recognize what we were doing. During the time of the Nabi, all of the Muslims in Al-Medina pray one Eid. One Eid, all of them. That's impossible today. Because those over there, they curse the companions. Those over there, they worship the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Those over there, they're apologetic and they acquiesce to please kuffar. So they want to say, Al-Islam. You don't have to wear hijab. Al Islam is antiquated, it's back in the past. How are you going to be together? And it said, But I do see that this salat, you're doing it, but the salat has been lost. What did he mean? It didn't mean that the people weren't praying like us. He misses Fajr. Outside of Ramadan, he always misses Fajr. In Ramadan, he's trying to do better, but outside of Ramadan, he didn't mean that. What he meant was the leader of the Muslims during that time, Yazid. Al Hajjaj ibn Yusuf al Thaqafi. The Nabi said to Abu Dhar, Ya Abu Dhar, Kayfa Bika, Ida Kanat Alekum Umara, you are Kherun al Salat and Waktiha. How is it going to be, Ya Abu Dhar, if you get some leaders who delay the Salat from the proper time? 
Abu Dhar said, what should I do if that happens, Ya Rasulullah? He said, pray at the right time. Pray in your house at the right time. And then come out and pray with them. It'll be a nafila. So during that time, Yazid, he was delaying the prayer. You want to know how he delayed the prayer? He delayed the prayer today. Salatul Juma. Today. They were praying Salatul Juma at Maghrib time. Maghrib time. And Hajjaj would have his sword and say, anybody who goes against me, I'll chop your head off. And as a result of that, Anas ibn Malik was crying. As a result of the effect of the prayer, the people playing with the prayer. Today, my daughter, she doesn't pray. No problem. I pray. I even go to the masjid. I go to the masjid and I come back and my daughter is asleep. My son is asleep. He didn't even come home yet outside smoking crack. And it's okay. And it's Ibn Umali, he was crying. That's the condition of the companions, Ikhwani, and the condition of the Muslims today. You want to know the Salat with the companions? Umar radiallahu anhu. Umar radiallahu anhu. He has some beef. He has some drama with a non-Muslim who was from the Majus, Imagine That man got upset. He said, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill him. So him being a coward, he started to think, I'm going to assassinate the Amir al-Mu'mineen. But he didn't do it face to face to a, in a duel like a man would do. You have a problem with someone, be a man. Go tell him in his face. Don't be like a woman. Don't be like a coward talking behind his back. Tell him in his face. He didn't want to meet Umar in his face. So what did he do? He poisoned the sword. He sharpened the knife. He poisoned the knife. He sharpened the knife. He poisoned the knife. He sharpened the knife. He said, yeah, they do a good job. He put another knife on the one. Made it a double blade. Double blade. With poison and it was sharp. When Umar started praying, he waited till Umar prayed. Why didn't he come in front of his face in the street and say, okay, let's get busy? Because he knew when those companions started praying and they said, Allahu Akbar, they meant that. They didn't say, Allahu Akbar is my key. Allahu Akbar is my car running. The shaitan khanzip, he comes to the person during the time of the prayer. Starts telling him stuff he didn't think about before the prayer. When Umar said, Allahu Akbar, that's what he meant. And the man knew that. The man came. He stabbed the Amir al-Mu'mineen and did the knife like that. Ran down the line and started stabbing 14 other people. They all died. What happened? Umar radiallahu anhu said, the dog killed me. And Abdurrahman ibn Awf who was in the front row. Because the ulama of the companions used to pray behind the imam. The ulama, Abdurrahman ibn Awf, one of the ten promised Jannah. He took some steps up and he completed the salat. They didn't stop praying. In this masjid, if the imam caught a heart attack, la samah Allah. If someone, something happened and we stopped to call the EMS, you can't blame us in Islam. We'll stop, call the emergency medical services, and then we'll pray after that. And if people have to go with them, they'll go. You can't blame us. That's our deen. Those companions didn't stop. Abdurrahman ibn Auf, he prayed. He shortened the prayer, and then they took the people out. It didn't stop there. They took Umar home. They thought he was going to live. The 12 years of the khilaf of Umar radiallahu anhu, his aqidah. His tawheed, his ibadah, his justice, his manliness. It made those people think this man is, is invincible. Twelve years, Al-Islam spread. They thought he was going to live. If anybody can live, it's Umar. They gave him some milk. When he drank the milk, it came out of his intestines. They said, he's going to check out. He's going to die. Don't let him, don't let him lose consciousness. Because if he loses consciousness, that's it. He started losing consciousness. They were trying to wake him up. He wouldn't wake up. He's about to die. Abdullah bin Abbas said, I know where to wake him up. It was Abdullah bin Abbas's job. He used to sit with Umar in the shura. It was his job. Whenever it was time for Salat, Ibn Abbas would say, Amir al meaning it's time for Salat. When? When? 30 minutes before the Salat. Not when the Adhan heard, when he heard the Adhan. Before that, he made preparations and he got ready for the Salat. Not like the people today. Come to the Juma, come to any masjid. Alul Hadith, come to the masjid. More than half of the masjid is empty. And the Imam is on the member. Now, some people have reasons and excuses. My point is, I'm not judging you. My point is, where is Ahlul Hadith? Where is Ahlul Hadith? Umar radiallahu anhu, he was falling out. Ibn Abbas said, I know where to wake him up. Ibn Abbas said, Ya Amir al Mu'mineen, it's time for Salat. Umar woke up. He said to the people, 
والله لا إيمان لمن لا صلاة له. I swear by Allah, there's no iman for the one who doesn't pray. That man is dying, and he swore. No iman for the one who doesn't pray. And that's because Ikhwani as the Nabi told the people Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam If you don't pray, that's kufr It is that example that distinguishes us from the Sikh and the Hindu There are many distinguishing factors on the Muslim That when you see him, he's using his right hand He's saying things when he sneezes You see him before you even know him, you say that's a Muslim But one of the biggest, biggest issues that prove he's a Muslim That prayer, that prayer أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ونسأل الله تعالى التوفيق والسداد الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله النبي تولى صلى الله عليه وسلم الصلاة خير الموضوع فمن استطاع يستكثر فليستكثر The salat is the best thing that you can do So whoever has the ability to make more prayer make as many prayers as possible Friday, Juma the companions will come after the sun rose up. They will go home and take a ghusl and come back to this masjid, racing each other. And they will make two rakas, 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 until the Nabi got on the member, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Taraweeh, taraweeh is done. Tomorrow may be Eid. And we find out at Maghrib time. It's done, it's gone. Taraweeh, he didn't take advantage of it. The Nabi said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, first thing Allah will look at Yomu Qiyamah, your prayer. If your prayer was complete, Allah will write it down complete. If your prayer was lacking, Allah will say to the Malaika, look at his Sunnah prayers, his Nawafil prayer, and complete the prayers that were lacking from the Nawafil. He didn't start praying until he was 25. He was living some time, he didn't pray at all. The Malvi Saab tells you, you have to pay him 500 pounds and he'll make dua for you. Let it go. Some other person with no knowledge will tell you, you have to figure out how many prayers you missed and make it up. How are you going to figure out 10 years of prayer? No, what you have to do is make Tawbah to Allah and do as many nawafil as possible. The nawafil will complete the wajib prayer that we're lacking. That's one of the benefits of Taraweeh. Lastly, Akhwani, you want to know the position of prayer in Islam? The Nabi was dying, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When he was dying, he lost consciousness. The people were upset, agitated. His head was wrapped up, and they knew, because they thought he was getting better. He came out to the masjid, and he was walking with people to the masjid. He got to the masjid, when he saw the people praying, he smiled out of happiness, what he left this ummah with. He was given this prayer when he went on the Isra and Miraj, the, oblig uh, the obligation of zakat came to him from Jibril. The obligation of Saul came to him from Jibril. The obligation of Hajj came to him from Jibril. The obligation of Salah, the Nabi went up and took it himself and came back with it. And Musa told him, go back, they won't be able to do it. Sadaqa Musa, they can't do five. The Nabi, when he saw the people praying, he smiled. So they thought he was getting better. He went back home. Day, two days, three days, he started getting sick again. The people were nervous. The Nabi, he lost consciousness. Now the Nabi Ikhwani, he is Hakim. I just need two extra minutes. The Nabi has Hikmah. Hikmah means you put things in a proper place. It means wisdom, but it means putting things in a proper place. Allah is al Hakim. He knew not to give you money and to give so-and-so money. Because if he gave you money, you would destroy yourself. Halal and Haram, Allah knew what he was doing. Hakim, putting things in a proper place. Treating the Muslim as he ought to be treated. Treating the elder the way he should be treated. Treating my mother and my father as the mother and the father. If I treat my mother and the father like the kid, I didn't put it in the proper place. The opposite of hikmah, zulm. Zulm is putting things in the wrong place. If you worship other than Allah, you're supposed to put your ibadah with Allah. That's hikmah. Highest form of hikmah. If you put your ibadah with Rasulullah, if you put your ibadah with something, that's zulm. Zulm. The Nabi was Hakim. He knew what to say, when to say, how to say it, who to say it to. What do you think he said when he, let, when he came back through? He lost consciousness. The people were nervous. A lot of time went by. He woke up. What do you think he said? Oh Allah, have mercy on my ummah. Allah, la. The Nabi said to the people, As-salat, as-salat. 
Take care of the prayer, take care of the prayer, and take care of your right hand possessions. Your slaves, your children, your women, people under your supervision. He lost consciousness. A lot of time went by. He woke up again. He said to the people, As-salat, as-salat, wa ma malakat aymanakum. Second time, emphasis. He lost consciousness the third time. Ali, he asked the people, you want to know what the last words of the Nabi were? For you young brothers, what was the last words that came out of the, the, the mouth of the Nabi, sallallahu He woke up the third time. He said, as-salat, as-salat, wa ma malakat aymanakum. And then he died. Those are the last words of Nabuwa. Now you're going to tell me that Salat is not important, Ya Abdullah? Are you going to tell me that this is an issue we just do like this? My kid is not praying. My family is not praying. Now my teenage son is hard dealing with him. I brought him here. He's something else. I'm not telling you kick him out. I'm not telling you be rough and tough and fight him. I'm saying to you, you have to give advice. You just sitting down and it's okay, your daughter doesn't pray, that's a problem. That's going to come back on you. So the very first thing that Allah is going to ask you young people about your Qiyam is that prayer. Did you pray it on time? Did you put the job before the prayer? What did you do with it? And it's going to be reflective of all of the deeds. We ask Allah Ta'ala have mercy upon us and to have mercy upon you to establish our feet firmly upon a tawheed and to make our hearts the hearts of the people who love the sunnah of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. People who hate shirk and bidah. We ask Allah Ta'ala to give us our rushd and to bring us back to our senses and may He Ta'ala accept all of our ibadat and forgive us for our indiscretions and our mistakes. Aqim as-salat, Allah.